Oh, Kim, yeah. what'd you do? That's what you do. You gotta run from the camera. Not feeling social today? Okay, bye, pumpkin. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I'm great. Finally time. I need to go ahead and get this Monstera repotted. I'm talking about it for several months that I needed to do this. The Croton's doing that thing where they throw a fit. You bring it inside and they drop their foliage like crazy. It's fine. Back to the Monstera. I figured we'll go ahead and do a vlog while I get this done. Not gonna be anything formal. There are plenty of videos out there about how to repont these Monstera Deliciosas. So I figure we keep it casual. So the main issue that I've had here with this plant, since I repotted it, it has grown a ton, which is fantastic. It's a nice, healthy plant, but it's too, <laughs> <laughs> These leaves, it's just raining croton leaves over here. It, it needs to get repotted. It needs to get repotted now because I need to finish setting up the plants in the growth space. Like none of these are supposed to be over here. All of them are supposed to be over here. But I can't really get things arranged until this has been repotted into something that has a support stake in it that can actually hold the plant up. This pot is too small to put a support in there that's big enough for the plant. The plant has now gotten so big that it just falls over. I think that this would be best to do outside right because why i don't no reason to make a mess in here it's like 50 degrees outside should be fine <laughs> okay i've got all my supplies over here everything's all set up and ready to go to stabilize this as something to climb on i'm going to use a pvc pipe I'm connecting that to a flange i think that's a shower flange i think that that's what that is i'll help keep the whole thing upright and stable once it's in the pot at least that's the idea anyways it's always worked for me in the past when i've done it with like pothos why is nothing coming out what's wrong here there we go but pothos they tend to they're not as heavy this is a bigger plant but need to get this nice and clean that's because i'm using a pvc cement to make sure to weld these parts together so don't want any dirt or debris or oils or anything in there that's going to affect how well they bond this got really dirty wow okay so i'm just going to take this pvc primer this goes on first a little brush on it i really should be wearing gloves make sure you wear gloves when doing this right, so first I just put this primer on here when i get a nice even coat all the way around the pvc pipe then i'll do the same thing for the inside of the flange and then now it goes on the actual pvc cement oh that's a nice pretty blue color then again get in thoroughly and heavily to the inside of the flange probably use a little bit more than this but this will do the trick this will work fine press this together nice and tight i'm going to set that on the ground and Give it some time to cure. That's going to fuse those two pieces together. All right, and while that's doing its thing and curing, it should probably be the best time to go ahead and get my soil blended up. I'd probably do that in the gorilla cart. Oh, and when I say allow this time to cure, I meant like 30 seconds. This stuff bonds pretty much instantly. For my soil that I'm going to use for, sorry about the lighting, it's just that time of year filming outside's always problematic when the sun's so low in the sky. This is what I'm using here. This is cocoa bob. Coconut base, there's earthworm castings in there, lots of perlite. This soil drains very well. Holds on to moisture fairly well, not quite as well as I want for the Monstera. So I've added some organic compost up here that's gonna help it hold on to moisture for just a little bit longer, but not too long. Don't want it to be soggy. Also going to add in some bark chips. This is going to help create a more airy blend. Oh, may as well just use the whole bag. And then I also have these lava chips. Chunky perlite would probably work better, but this is what I have, and it's going to serve the same purpose. It's going to aid in making sure that the soil blend stays nice and airy, that lots of oxygen can get in there and be around those roots. And I'll just blend this up until everything's nice and homogenous. One thing I look for when potting up aeroids in general, but particularly deliciosa, is just that the soil doesn't stick when you squeeze it. To be nice and loose, want it to fall apart, Typically with other soil blends that I've made in the past, I would do way more bark, lots of perlite, maybe some sphagum moss. I'm not always the biggest fan of the sphagum. I personally don't think the Deliciosas need that much attention put into their soil blend. They're pretty sturdy plants. And while it is best to make sure that their soil does drain freely and that's nice and airy, but still holds on to some moisture, that's very true. It's not like the plant's just going to drop dead if it holds on to a little bit too much moisture or if it dries out too quickly. They're pretty sturdy. The main thing with holding on to too much moisture is you have to worry about rot. So temperature becomes a really big factor and so does airflow. And I like to water my plants fairly frequently so it is important to me that it does drain quickly and that it dries even just a smidge faster than I would do for some of my other plants or some of my aeroids just because like I said, I'm a heavy handed waterer. It's just nice to have that extra assurance to know that okay, if I forget 
forget that I had just watered the plant and I just I'm feeling myself while I'm out watering and accidentally over water that that's going to drain quickly that way ideally I don't have to even worry about rot being an issue with the plant and yet this blend falls apart quickly I've used it with lots of my other plants it dries fast enough the monstera should be pretty happy in this even though it's not quite as chunky of a mix. I don't really know how to describe it. I'm sure you know what I mean when I say chunky, that, that there's a lot of big materials in the soil. And the whole point of that is to keep the soil from sticking together, right? And that's, you just saw it. That soil's not sticking together. All right, moving on, losing light, because you know, it's three o'clock and this time of year it gets dark stupidly early. 24 inch plastic pot. I have holes drilled along the sides. So when this is sitting down, no matter what water can get out that way, in case there's too much weight on the bottom of the pot, I don't have to worry as much about this hole being clogged up and then the plant you know drowning having the extra holes on the sides just extra assurance i always feel like more is better when it comes to having holes in the bottoms of the pots all right so i'm gonna take my pole i'm gonna put that down in here and i think i'm actually going to put the pole towards the back of the pot that way i can have some room in the front in case i want to add some other fun things to grow up that pole with the monstera not saying i'm going to it's just an idea I forget though i need to drill more holes in here so i can push that back further and because this flange covers up the main drainage hole in the bottom that that defeats the purpose need the holes there okay so what i've done here is i drilled more holes like i just mentioned needed more holes in here and then i went ahead and put a hole right where those two corners lined up right on the edge of the pot can i help you Hello, you're in my face. I'm busy right now. So cute. Love my dogs. <laughs> so you can see here how that's coming through. Sorry, this is so. You were very distracting to. He had his face like right up in my mug. Anyways, that's going to help keep this stable. If I were doing this in a pot that had some legs on it, some feet, something to go ahead and lift it up, then I would go ahead and put some little bolts through here and put some nuts on there, help secure that in place. That would keep this whole thing much more secure. However, the bottom of this pot's pretty flat. That's another reason I wanted holes in the sides right there. It's nice to have that extra assurance for good drainage. Now I'm going to take my Sharpie here. There's a better way to do this with like a yardstick or something to keep it level. I know I'm going to want my soil probably down about an inch to an inch and a half down here in the pot. I'm going to want my coconut liner to start a little bit higher. So I'm going to mark this just very sloppily right around here. Have to remember to turn on the hot glue gun that needs to warm up. While that's warming up, go ahead and get this coconut liner ready. Hey, also, I'm just going to have to hope that I have enough here because this is it. This is all I got. That should be plenty. I'm just wrapping this around now so I can get an idea of where to make some cuts on this. Put a little mark with that sharpie right there. So I'll go ahead and just cut this right down this line. Yes, I know my scissors are rusty. I prefer to use the old ones for doing things outdoors. <laughs> Look at that nice straight line. Not so much. It's fine. Okay, now that the glue gun's warmed up, I'm going to go ahead and start getting hot glue placed randomly around here. I'm going to be reinforcing this with a string afterward. This is just to help quickly get that coconut liner to stick. And just to be extra safe, I'm putting a few extra dabs inside some of these seams and I'm pushing those back down. That'll do. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to be covered with a plant here not too long. Oh, I don't want to, Don't forget the tip. Okay, that's better. This part right here, this cap, this pops on and off. I'll paint that some other time. For right now, I think it's fine like that. And then just for some extra security, I'm going to go ahead and take some jute twine and wrap that around this whole thing. And I should mention, I prefer to use some sort of poly string, fishing line, something of that nature when doing this just because it doesn't break down. Jute Twine's fine temporarily, but at some point I need to make sure to get some sort of plastic poly line, something that's really strong to go ahead and wrap up this as well, because eventually this is going to break down and then the whole thing could just fall apart. And that kind of defeat the whole purpose of everything I'm doing here. Okay, finally, now for the fun part. Go ahead and start filling this pot up a little bit over halfway. This oil does tend to deflate quite a bit the first time you water it. That should be plenty. Let's get the Monstera. Oh, the camera wasn't recording when I unpotted it. That's okay. I mean, you didn't miss much. Just pulled it out of the pot. Actually, quite tricky. This thing was really rooted in there. Their roots, they stick to everything. The roots are looking good and healthy, though. There's not too many papery broken deflated pieces that I need to pull out from there and there's plenty of new growth. That's always a relief. You never really know when you do your unpottings what you're going to find. I mean based on the way the plant's been growing I just assumed that everything was okay. Sometimes these little buttheads like to surprise us with problems. I'm pleased with this. I shouldn't have done this in the cart with the soil but the plant's just it's so big I don't really have much of a choice. Go ahead and try and drop this in here and get it as close to the pole as I can. Ugh, it's it's so wonky. That's all right though. That's one of the reasons I wanted to use the PVC for this. It's nice, thick and sturdy and the plant can go ahead and wrap itself back around and start 
going off in a more desirable direction. So you can see I don't have this quite centered into there. I'm probably gonna give this a little bit more of a scoop because doesn't that just look like it, it just wants to snap. It doesn't look like the most secure way to have that on that pole, does it? Is that, is it like cringing anybody out? You think it's gonna snap any minute? If it does, that's okay. No, obviously that's not okay. I don't want the plant to snap. I just meant that if it did, they're pretty easy to propagate. So I just have more of them. But I would be bummed if the plant were to break. It's going to take some time to train this to come back around and start getting on there. And over time, I may have to make some cuts and that's okay. They're tough, they can handle it. These plants produce aerial roots like nothing I've ever seen on any of my other plants. They just, they shoot out all over the place. Every single spring, I have to kind of peel the plant off of whatever it was nearby when I move them outside. Then in the fall, I have to do the same thing. It puts out those aerial roots and then I have to peel it up so I can take it inside. I know, sounds a little harsh, but they're tough. They can take it. It's been that way with this plant for like 10 years and it's never been a problem before. Now, the reason I didn't glue the PVC cap onto this would help if you could see what I'm talking about. The reason this cap is still here and I didn't adhere it on there, I didn't fuse it, that's because at some point I'm definitely gonna have to make this bigger and I would like this to get really 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 big and tall someday which is why I haven't just cut that to go ahead and straighten out the wonky growth. So it'll do its thing and it'll vine back up there and correct itself and then at some point probably not that far off in the future I'm going to have to extend this pole so it can keep growing up high and then when that happens I can pop that cap off put a connector on there and put another PVC up there and just let it let it keep doing its thing let it keep on going up high. And then when I was talking about those aerial roots I did want to mention the coconut liner I have, in my opinion, with the Deliciosa, that's really more for appearance. Well, it's for appearance, and uh, if something should happen, I need to pull the plant off. It's a lot easier to get those aerial roots off of the coconut, or really it'll peel and take the coconut with it. They will stick to the PVC. I mean, they stick to pretty much everything, I think. With the PVC, you have to do more damage to those aerial roots when peeling it off, which still shouldn't be much of an issue because they're very tough, but just to be safe in case I need to do something with it or this doesn't work out, it's nice to just have that peace of mind. And like I said, I could end up underplanting this with something that stays smaller. I don't think I will. It seems unnecessary, at least until this gets taller and it's not going to be quite as full down below. If this were a plant that really needs the moisture in order to start getting adhered to the pole, then what I like to do is use some of the wicking cord or cotton cord, and I will make sure that that goes down into the soil, wrap that all the way up the pole, and then put my sagum or my coconut, something like that over there. It helps wick the moisture up the pole and plants that are maybe a little bit more picky and hard to get to grab onto something that helps them grab on more quickly. I don't think that's necessary with the Deliciosa. They grab onto everything. Like they're kind of pervy in that regard. They had to take something that's unique and fun and turn it into something dirty. My bad. I think that's gonna have to do it because it's starting to get dark out. Toby, Toby, stay out of there. He has a thing for any type of soil that has like earthworm castings or guano. Why you gotta be nasty, Toby? That's gross. Don't eat dirt. I shouldn't have to tell you that, Toby. Okay, that's done. I've had that PVC pipe sitting around in my backyard for like a year, something like that, year and a half, because I had been planning on doing this and just just never got around to it. So good to have that done. Plant's going to be much happier in this setup. The pot size is a little bit irrelevant to growing the plant. I mean, not really, but you can keep these in the same pot for a long, long, long time. It's another reason I like to use things that are coconut based because it breaks down a little bit more slowly, but then I added bark to it and a little bit of compost. So that kind of cancels that out. So I do still have to keep an eye on it. Just have to make sure the soil doesn't get too clumpy as it breaks down. Kind of turns into mud, doesn't drain as well. And then the plant rots and that's no fun. That's why the good drainage thing is so important. I did finish filling this up. I forgot to film that part. It's full of soil. I'm going to wait to water it in until I actually have it back into the growth space though, because it, I just, it'll be heavy. I don't feel like moving a heavy plant. I'm technically not supposed to be moving the heavy things around anyways. So gonna keep that dry until I get that inside. What are some of the fun and unique, interesting ways you guys like to get your plants up on those poles. Comment down below. I love talking to everybody. Of course, everybody, you'll see what's going on with the plant in the vlogs. It's gotten too big to hide. It'll be around in the background with most things going on in the growth space during the winter time. All right, it's getting kind of chilly. Gonna go ahead and take this inside. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.